So the now second classification that was uh, uh, stated in the sutra, it says uh, the mind is devoid um, of mind. Mm -hmm. So which means uh, <coughs> mind does not truly exist it or independently existed, or inherently existed, we tend to believe <coughs> naively that mind is something like a very solid and is substantially like a reality that is existed. So that is very common in our sense. Uh, subconsciously, you believe that. So, but uh, in the reality, tell us a different story. So that means the mind is not truly existed. No. So therefore, in order to realize as such that mind is not truly existed, so because uh, intellectually you believe, oh yes, mind is emptiness, does not work with you at all. And uh, you pray, may mind is exist, uh, and mind, may mind does not exist truly. They pray to Buddha. So that will not work at all. So you have to prove that mind is devoid of a mind through the realization, through the experiential understanding. Yeah. So therefore, um, yeah, so first I, I say this, then later uh, I go for some um, that is related to the practice of Vajrayana the same uh, way they explain. Mm -hmm. And um, then in Vajrayana practice, uh, as you have heard of uh, these two processes, the process of the generation and uh, then the process of the uh, accomplishment, the Tibetan word Jirim and uh, Dzogrim. So why the Cheering, that is a visualization of the deity, the visualization of a mandala, the visualization of the, the syllables and uh, etc. Because that is something like uh, just a technique. It is not essential practice in the Vajrayana Buddhism at all. So this is a technique that try to reform your mental attitude. You know? make you available to perceive the ultimate 
understanding. So this means in Vajrayana practice that the powerful, the, the Vajra master cannot transfer you the power of realization directly. So without the proper the process going into the practice. So therefore, Jirim is the conventional skill yeah. to, to reform your mind. So you visualize the color, shape, and uh, the construction, the syllables, etc. <clears throat> then that is going to that helps you to in your mind, and then the longer you do practice, then eventually that you can transform your uh, mind into the, the the accomplishment. So similar to here, also in Sutrayana practice. So all the practice that I have been explaining this morning, accumulation of merit, the end of purification of negativities, and that there are certain like a mental uh, the process that you have practiced, all a method make you available to available to perceive the understanding of reality. The <coughs> Tibetan word semni, sem ma chide, it's very related to each other. It's not two separate subjects. It has to link to each other. Without mind, you cannot gain the realization of the, the devoid of a mind. Uh, so you have to depend on it. Although the mind is not there, but you have to have mind. <laughs> so <laughs> we cannot deny, you cannot work with it, anything without this. So it's very interesting. And uh, when Tibetan was say uh, Ma Chi, Ma Chi does not mean the mind at the beginning existed. After some time, <laughs> by force of your study, contemplation, meditation, or training of your mind, then it's a sort of a, you are uh, kind of a made, you have made the eliminate or dispel this the solid existence of the mind. So this is a distort uh, idea. It's, it's a distorted area, idea, which is uh, not true at all. So, ma chi means uh, the innately or co, co, co emergently, the, such mind is never, never existed. But only because of the thought process, the conceptual, con conceptual process, so that you have obscured such, therefore, you have it been labeled on the mind that is existed. So you have applied that label, so then the problem started. So therefore, samachi is a very powerful word, means the innately, naturally, the mind that is never substantially existed. Devoid of uh, the of mind, the it is like a um, not through the analytical point of view alone, but you also from the experiential uh, understanding that you have to uh, experience the more you analyze the mind, the characteristic of the mind, uh, then the more you will realize it's uh, the uh, what I call emptiness, so emptiness of the mind. So devoid of mind mean, means uh, the the <coughs> mind immediately never existed, but at the same time it is there. The mind is there. So mind is there. When we say when I say mind is there means conventionally. So there are two truths: the conventional way and the ultimate level. So conventionally, so the mind is there. The mind is the base of the samsara. The mind is the base of the nirvana. If there is no mind, no samsara, no nirvana. So, but it's true. 
ultimately there is no mind. Because of no mind, there is no thought. If there is no thought, there is no samsara. Then there is no nirvana, which is an accident. <laughs> yes, we need it. But the problem is because uh, it's a, it's a still very far because we have a, such a obscuration in our mind, so that keep disturbs our mind because your mental is not mind is not stabilized as yet. So it's very in, in, instable our mind. So first we have to make the stable in what do you call stabilized. We have to stabilize your mind. Once we have a stabilized mind, <coughs> then from there, then you can develop the wisdom. Then the wisdom, once fully developed, then you are at the stage of safety. Safety. So therefore, the process to getting into the understanding of the reality, it takes rather long time, but we have to train in every day. So, anyway, uh, when, when in Tibetan word it says that Semmachi, that means <coughs> mind does not exist. It. Okay, how? How does not exist? With three reasons given by the uh, Navajuna and as well as the Shatarachita. Now, first reason is because Mind is completely free from the cause. You, Samamapa. You is the cause, Samamapa, the no characteristic. So, therefore, no cause. Because of no cause, if mind produced by cause, then, okay, something you can substantially can prove, oh, this is a mind. But it is free from the cause, and it is free from the from the result. No? Do then, and the essence is the emptiness. So free from cause, free from result of creation, and the free from the inherent existence, more domain. So because of these three, if you analyze carefully. The more you analyze the mind, the characteristic of the mind, then you will find the mind is a totally something that you can experience. <coughs> but if you level how does mind is, then you can't find the mind. So therefore, as a meditator, so when they do meditation, they can experience like clarity mind, clarity light, clear light, the luminosity, all these qualities, it's, a, it's far beyond our ordinary imagination. But it's a rather experience, it arises spontaneously. So that is the, because of that mind, we tend to believe that something is concrete and something is very solid, is existed. So if you believe, with that belief, if you meditate, then you can't experience any these the qualities that are supposed to you have to experience, but you can't experience that because your meditation is contaminated. Your belief is also fabricated, is a contamination. So the real mind is the free from all this contamination, free from fabrication, the free from the substances free from the creation, the free from a belief whatsoever. So it's just simply you experience in their nature. So it is it is the nature of the mind. So therefore, as the Nipamanamsya says, if mind is a truly existed or inherently existed, as you naively believe, then, no matter how much you put effort into the practice, then there is no way to, to develop all the noble qualities at all. Because 
substantially or inherently existent, existed means it's very much independent. So that mind does not depend on any other condition. So it is there, but if it is there, when? When mind is there? So no answer, because it is there always. Always from the beginningness of the time, truly. Huh? Truly there. Then it is there with the delusive mental attitude. If, if that is the case, then our anger is always there. Then our all negative mind, uh, mental attitude always there, truly there. So by applying any methods or any practice that you cannot cease. So those. So therefore, so that is not the true. Mind does not exist truly there. Therefore, you can do practice. Therefore, you can be compassionate. Therefore, you can cultivate bodhicitta, loving kindness. Therefore, you can develop wisdom. And that through the wisdom, that you can eliminate, eliminate those the delusions and the confusions. Because the confusion and the delusions are not the, the nature of your mind. These are obscuration. Is the, the thing that you can eliminate easily and simply. So, as Yohan um, says, so, but it's not easy when you say mind is uh, empty. It's not easy. And uh, as a professor, you tell, uh, you give teachings, mind is empty, mind is not there, uh, mind is like a dream. Uh, so, but how? But when I get problem, mind is still there. <laughs> yes. Worst case is if someone insults me, then I can find more mind. Yes, mind is solid there. Yes. And if somebody really abuse me, then I could feel mind is more powerful. Then it's difficult when I say mind is not there. So it's too early to say. So therefore, we need long term training. Thorough training, and uh, you have to be patient with that, and you have to go outside to see all kinds of things to train your mind. To not only always shut the door in the window inside the room or in the retreat place to say that I'm training my mind. So you cannot train a mind in the, inside your room. You have to see all kinds of people. You have to hear all kinds of a story, and uh, you have to meet all kinds of people sour people, sweet people, so whatever, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is a great, great testimony to, to walk with your mind. Yes, to walk with your mind. As the Buddha says, you are the, your own master. Yeah, so Buddha says, you are the, your own master. So you have, you have to be master to yourself. So you have to push yourself to realize mind is a void of mind. <laughs> when we talk about the mind or the consciousness and the wisdom, two separate, and we believe uh, that particularly in the the, the Dzogchen tradition, the Sam is uh, like uh, very much mind of the samsara, Ripa, that's the self-arising awareness is the mind of the, the nirvana. Uh, that is just a technique. Uh, any explanation that is given by Mahamudra or Mahaati, there is no definitive direction. All teaching should be performed according to your capacity. That is very important. There is no general teaching in Mahamudra at all. There is no public talk of Mahamudra <laughs> at all. So it is a something that is a very personal teaching. In the sense of the personal, that I have to see your capacity, your mental capability, and uh, your mental situation. So I have to perform teaching accordingly. Now, so that is the special uh, way that the, the leading 
practitioners into the right path. So what I'm trying to tell you here is now, because the wisdom is in English word, but in Sanskrit, two terms different. The wisdom general is mm. like, just like a prajana, shera. She means uh, mind, ra is the supreme. So the supreme mind, so that mind is much, much upgrade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, upgrade than our this uh, very lousy mind. Mm -hmm. So, sorry to say this. Uh, yeah, it is really lousy. Uh, so, <laughs> so to, to upgrade, to upgrade through the training, so you finally you can see the mind and the wisdom, really, there's no two separate. Mind should transform into the wisdom. So that mind become clearer, 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 and then we call this the mind of wisdom. Yeah. You can still have anger, no problem. You can still have a desire, you can still have all this, uh, you know, uh, entertainment things. But, uh, but, but, but you are still free from the, from the fixation. Our problem is with the fixation, not the, not the thought itself. Thought is innocent, totally innocent. Anger itself is innocent. Okay? The pride itself is innocent. But the problem is we fixate to this and to grasp that, cling on it, that's a problem. So in order to disconnect, tie to these, uh, what do you call it? the matter of teaching, then one can totally free from So <coughs> thoughts no longer disturb you at all. The thoughts become your friend and the best friend. So as long as thoughts don't disturb you, then what do you bother? So you can have all kinds of fun. It doesn't really matter. So, but, but you have to have a full of a power to work with that. So there's no pretend at all. <coughs> So if you pretend, you, you will you will caught up again in a trouble. So therefore, totally free, totally free. Yeah? So you will be totally free automatically once you are able to transform that our current mind into the wisdom. So you are the person of wisdom. So you are excellent. Yes. <laughs> Consciousness, Tibetan word nam she. Yeah. Wisdom, okay, Tibetan use, ye she. So both are mind actually, she, she. But the difference is one is ye, one is nam. <laughs> so what makes it different? Nam she, that the mind is the distracted. So that you have no power to control yourself because you have been controlled by distraction. Yeah? Rather than you control the distraction. The destruction control you. So therefore we are in this beautiful samsara. And uh, so yeah, it's still okay. I mean you are you can enjoy in the samsara, but the problem is because uh, once you are here, so it's difficult to get out from here. <laughs> so this is our problem. <laughs> And uh, if you don't want to get out, it's still okay. So Buddha really doesn't matter. So he didn't force us to, to get out. But if you really feel disgust with this, uh, the pain for the samsara, then these are the process. So yeshe in the Sanskrit jhana is not the prajana. The prajana is the shera. The shera related with the study. Shera related to the contemplation. Shara related to general meditation. Because without Shara, Rajana, we cannot practice anyway. But Jana is more profound. So Jana and the consciousness, and Namshi and Yeshi, not two separate things exactly. Or no. just just different because of that it's a concept. When you destructed your mind, that moment, your mind is the destructive mind. We call this the namshi. Once you realize the, the essence or the nature of this destructive mind, that no longer you are caught up by destruction, 
So you are free. So that moment, your mind is called Yeshe, it's the jhana. So only different is the moment when you are one that you do not realize, one that you have realized fully. So they, that's why there's no two things of one called this is a samsara, the another is called nirvana. There's no two separate the phenomena. So it's just that when your mind is distracted, then uh, <coughs> what you see is the samsara. So when you realize the essence of the that mind, then what you see is the, the nirvana. So, as a Kamapa, eight Kamapa Michidoji, in his uh, commentary to the Madhyamika Avatara, so he said, this is just only the concept to different things. So, then, with this perspective, what you can understand is, is the same. Namshi and a Yeshi. Namshi is a Yeshi, Yeshi is a Namshi. Is it totally different? Then there's no totally different at all. So in order to realize as such, so we are training now. We are working with our Namshi, not the Yeshi. Yes. So in Tibetan word like Ma Chi or Man or Min, there is many words of negation. So negating like selfless means the self does not exist. And uh, like a the objectless means the object does not exist. So when when we use this, so you must not misunderstand that the object is completely not there, or the self is completely not there. And uh, of course, when we talk about the uh, mind, because actually the mind is very much, it would be the basis for everything, as I said earlier, is the basis for samsara, the basis for nirvana, and everything. But then one has to negate. What we have to be negate is the imputation of our mind. That is the only negate. Like you're talking about the atma, self. The self never, never existed. Even uh, relatively, conventionally, never never existed. Yes, that we can tell you. Mm -hmm. But the problem is because of the fixation that is existed. Mm -hmm. So this cause problem, not the self cause problem. So don't blame on the self. Don't blame on the Atma. But the, we should blame on the person who fixate to what is a, the, the I or Atma. So the better word, dark. That means the self or atma that is not existed, but existed what? That means zinba. Zin means the grasp or the whole so firmly that is the so called I, and then the mind. The first is the I, then the mind, so then it brings the attachment and the anger, the jealousy and the pride, all this the delusive mental attitude to bring out by simply or merely the grasping the Atma. Although Atma is never there, but we naively believed that there is something solidly I is there. So that is the cause of samsara. That is the cause of our problem. The problem with the grasping the I. So as a result, by the the critical analysis that I said, you research and uh, you analyze this. The more you analyze this, the more you can find the selflessness. The selflessness is existed. So among these three, the only one that has never existed is the self itself, the da itself. Yeah? But we have to work with it. We have to find, you know, in ancient time in India, I have heard that, where is that? Where is the Atma? So they go to the kitchen, the, yeah, to open all the containers, and the mop, where is the Atma? Where is it? Under the table, under the bed, under the, she the sheet, and you have to find, because it's not silly, it's very wise, actually, because it's so powerful, 
is really tortured to us from the beginning list of the time, is really our prime enemy. So you have to find this way. So you can find every corner, every nook of your house. So, so this is the how we search. It looks quite funny, but actually it's not funny. It, it is the way. You can't simply say there is no self. No self. <laughs> it, it will bother you always. So th that's how the same, the mind is like that. So what we negate is the negate our imputation of the mind, not the mind itself. So this we have to clarify very, very carefully. Like you give an example by the the few masters, but the particularly from the Chandrakirti. The example is uh, like a colorful rock that you see under your bed. Then it is your naive, without a uh, thorough investigation, you uh, tend to believe there is a snake, right? But the snake never existed on that, on, on that uh, colorful uh, rock, never, never. But the problem is they are still, because you feel scared. Yeah? So the rock does not communicate with you, you say that I'm rock, I'm not a snake. <laughs> yes. So then it's very long night for you, <laughs> and uh, you on switch on light, but the light cannot catch under your bed. And when you use torchlight, the more you, uh, more you uh, investigate, and the more the color is more bright. So you believe that eventually that is a really snake. So you don't dare to sleep on a bed and then you sleep outside the door. <laughs> because you are so scared with it. So it problem comes from your within, isn't it? It's not from the actually uh, because you didn't really check thoroughly. So the instruction is carry a stick <laughs> and then touch it. <laughs> so simple. <coughs> of course you're going to bring a long stick. <laughs> if you don't dare to close to it, it's wrong. Long stick. So does it really move on? See? Then, yeah, finally you found this is a rock, not, not, not a snake. Then you relieve. Then you might think, oh, how stupid am I? So, you, so the tension is gone. Anxiety is gone. So useless sweat, no? so you waste a lot of your energy. So, so same case to our mind. So you have to <coughs> analyze because we don't do analyze. We always do prayer. So prayer never work. <laughs> yes. May I? May I? May you? May I see the rope also as a free of <laughs> If you do that, so the Buddha will laugh at you. <laughs> yes, sorry. So, <laughs> so therefore, he has given us such a wonderful path and a, and a wonderful way how to find the Atma and the mind. Everything is just out mm -hmm. of your imputation. is not really there. It is a practice. It is not really you just uh, let, let Buddha let us just uh, live this way but it's, it's more essential practice that you have to make yourself a, a very determined and a very decisive towards your practice that can root up really the joy and the, the happiness to do with that, so, and the interest to do with that. So these are all come from the thorough the analysis. So therefore we have to analyze the practice means analyze and, and examine. So that is the context of the mind is uh, devoid of the mind. But it, 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 as I said earlier, it's very easy to say devoid of the mind. But we have to walk. So walk on our very normal mind. Our very normal mind is the basis for everything. Huh? So 
you can bring, you can, you can get a good and a bad, both, from the mind. So therefore, mind is like the source of everything. So mind is so precious. So, for the time being, it's, it's uh, not the time for us to see the mind is emptiness. For the time being, for us to see the mind is truly existed. And on this base, we have to walk. <coughs> but first, you have to believe the mind is truly existed. You have to believe, yes. And you don't need to have, because you have that tendency anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's good. You are very lucky. So, yeah. so that sense is still not you only, really, but my, myself also. So I have that. So I'm enjoying with it. So, but now we have to analyze with it and then practice on it. So as an object of practice, we need object. No? Without object, we cannot do practice. Like for the anger, we need someone who irritates you. So, so you, so you have to, you have to cherish this person. Say that you are my spiritual master. Yeah? So you have to cherish it. So you have to value this person, and you have to be joyful with this person. And uh, so th that is the object of your, your, your practice of anger. So similar to here, you have to believe that mind is yes there, mind is truly there. Then from there you start how to train and how to walk with the mind to realize the devoid of mind. That's just the process. Then the, the third uh, the classification, we will continue tomorrow morning. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.